Well, it's a very warm welcome and thank you for joining us on this independent off-tube studio commentary. It's the championship playoff final dubbed the £140 million game at a rain soaked Wembley Stadium. It's Leeds United taking on Southampton. Two teams that were in the Premier League last season looking to bounce straight back up to join Leicester City and Ipswich. We already have got promotion automatically. It should hopefully be an open game between two teams that are better going forward than they are defensively. You never really know with these playoff finals. It's myself, Paul Shabakovic, and and uh, Luke Ashurst are taking you through the action. And uh, Luke, just as I was about to bring you in, but Southampton have taken a free kick after a, an early offside. And straight away, Leeds have uh, managed to pick the ball off. They're trying to get forward here now down the uh, right-hand side. It's Grief into the penalty area, tries to get that ball back. But eventually, it uh, goes out for a goalkeeper. Maybe that's a sign of uh, intent there. Leeds trying to press and trying to uh, exert a bit of early pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Look, they're a team that wants to play on the front foot. Our Leeds United, they want to try and bring the ball forward as best as possible and look to try and capitalise on any mistakes. It's a nervy start for Southampton already it's a position which I mean neither side have really found themselves in of recent years of course Leeds when they did go up they went up automatically by winning the championship and Southampton have been in the Premier League for a number of years haven't had to go up through the playoffs because they've been in the top division already so both of these two sides will be I'm sure feeling the pressure on this what is a huge stage as you mentioned it's mostly it's the most expensive game in football you know trying to get back into the Premier League so it certainly is a very nervous day for both these two sides I think it'll be a case of who is able to get the best of those nerves and play at the best of their ability absolutely it may just be a case well of uh, reducing the errors well of course with all that uh, pressure any kind of mistake we saw some mistakes in the uh, FA Cup final yesterday with that surprising a win for Manchester United in the end but a long ball now towards the edge of the Leeds penalty that's easily dealt with by uh, Archie Gray gets the ball back there from Willie Notto has been one back straight away but it will go out for a Leeds uh, goal kick just to remind you it is Melier in goal for Leeds back for uh, Gray Rodon Ampadu and Junior Fur Poets, Grief and Kamara as the holding midfielders with Notso, Ruta and Somerville as the attacking midfield three. Piro is the front man for Southampton. It is McCarthy in goal, a back four of Walker Peters, Harwood Bellis, Bednarek and Stevens. It's Smallbone, Downs and Arebo as the midfield three with Brooks, Fraser and Armstrong as the attacking three. It's now with uh, Meliate just to hold the ball out towards the uh, right-hand side. Rodon under pressure already. So it sends a long ball over the top, trying to uh, pick out a teammate. It was uh, Ruter who had gone over onto that right-hand side. He's able to uh, pick the ball off Ryan Fraser. It was uh, back towards uh, Gruyev. Scored that uh, lovely free kick to start Leeds. is a fantastic win against uh, Norwich in the second leg after, it has to be said, the first leg in both of the uh, semi-finals were very, very flat. Yeah, they certainly were, but I think that played into the hands of both of these two sides, knowing they had the away leg in the second match. They were able to accept a nil-nil away from home and bank on the fact that the, the home atmosphere and the home advantage was going to play off for them, and Leeds are coming forward here nicely. They have, they've got some space here, and Greer brings the ball himself, he goes for goal, and uh, it gives Gray with the strike uh, coming in from the right-hand side. Referee had played an advantage there, John Brooks. It looked as though there's a bit of a push in the back on uh, Ruta as he tried to get things started. Gray was able to pick that ball up from the right-hand side, went for it with his left foot, and in fairness, McCarthy was very confident that was going wide, but it was actually quite close. Yeah, it, it was quite close in the end from Archie Gray. I think this is a big opportunity for the young man playing at full-back, not necessarily his first position, but it's somewhere where he's played throughout the season. He's done really quite well, and this is an opportunity for him to really show how much he's progressed over the course of the season. He's impressed a lot for Leeds as such a young player, and I think shots like that show that he is a player with an awful amount of confidence and that, that that's what you want from your young players is to have the confidence to be able to go forward and take on opportunities like that Southampton I have to say though have started really quite shakily inside that midfield the likes of Aribo, Downs and Smallbone just haven't been able to contain Leeds at the minute. Yeah certainly Leeds looking like they've started the better in these first four minutes it's now with Notto down the right hand side and Ruta trying to play a ball into Piro it's just a little bit too high uh, for Leeds is uh, number seven and that will sail all the way out for a uh, throw on to uh, Southampton uh, down there, right hand side. But certainly after four minutes, you have to say it's Leeds that have made the better start. And Southampton just looking a little bit nervy. Leeds have uh, been drawn as the home team, if you like. So they are in uh, their all white uh, home kit. Southampton in their all black away kit uh, this afternoon. And it's with uh, Walker Peters now down the right hand side. Plenty of uh, Leeds players to try and, and navigate past here as he's got this uh, throw on. Short ball in. Gets it uh, back, uh, Walker Peters there from Flynn Downs. Pressure there from uh, Somerville. And it uh, goes a bit of a shank in the end there from Jan Bednarik. And it's out for a uh, throw to Leeds. Chance to try and uh, put more pressure here on this uh, Southampton side. Junior Firpo with the uh, ball on the left-hand side. That's uh, one in towards uh, Ruta. 
Now it's with uh, Somerville. He hits the deck, and that's going to be a free kick. Just a little bit of a trailing leg there from uh, Flynn Downs. This will be a free kick for, for Leeds in a decent position. Yeah, of course, Flynn Downs on loan from West Ham United. There's talks about whether uh, Southampton will look to make that move permanent, but the, the midfield has really struggled, I think, so far in the uh, opening uh, five minutes or so. He's gotten he's had Leeds players get goal side of him a couple of times. Crescencio Somerville being the man there who's been able to do so. You don't want him cutting in on his right foot. Downs in the end just brings him down. But this is an opportunity from the free kick. I don't think Gruev or Somerville will be looking to shoot from this angle or from this distance. It's more of an opportunity to send the ball into the penalty area. But given what Gruev did in the playoffs against Norwich, you never know from this angle, from the distance. Maybe look to try and catch the keeper out with John Brooks. Just has a word there with Howard Bellis and with Glenn Kamara as well. Yeah, just want to get a bit of order in that uh, penalty area. And the angle's a little bit too wide to go for, but it could be one of those uh, crosses that is also on target. We'll see. It is going to be a right-footed ball in from Somerville. He's got a real angle towards the back post, headed down, but it's hooked clear. It was, uh, I think it was uh, Jack Stevens who got uh, the final touch on that, clearing it for a uh, throw down the uh, right-hand side. Rodon was the uh, intended target for that uh, free kick. Uh, just a little bit uh, too much of an angle on that in the end. It's a throw on to Lee's now down the right-hand side, taken by Gray. In towards uh, Ruta. Back to uh, Notto now on the right hand side. He was under pressure from Smallbone, so he goes all the way back to the halfway line here for uh, Ethan Ampadu and Joe Rodon. The two uh, Welsh internationals there at the centre of that Leeds defence. Now a nice little move there. It's the Notto against the ball. Edge of the area. He goes for goal. It's uh, a tame effort in the end. I was just wondering whether or not the referee thought about a free kick there, but it looks like he uh, played the advantage. Yeah, he did play the advantage, and Nonto took it and went for goal himself. He never really looked comfortable there, the Italian taking that shot on. Maybe could have looked to try and play it centrally. I think Piro was free in the middle, waiting for it instead. Went for goal on his left foot. It wasn't the worst effort in terms of he was in the, a nice position. He just didn't really look comfortable on his left foot, and that's why the shot was poor and comfortably uh, dealt with in the end by Southampton. But I have to say, it is the side from Yorkshire who, have started the much better team so far they look comfortable on the ball they've played it nice and quickly off of this Wembley pitch which will of course be slick with all this rain you'd have thought that would maybe suit Southampton the way they like to keep hold of possession but in fact they've just looked really nervy on the ball looking to kick it long and when they have tried to play it short they've made mistakes like they have done here yeah Stevens gives it away and then it's Notto's ball into the penalty area trying to get on the end of that is Ruto so tries to play it back to a teammate it was uh, Pirro who was waiting at the edge of the area the ball is eventually cleared and it is out for a a throw to Leeds down the uh, right-hand side, but certainly eight minutes into this game, Leeds are making the much better start here. So Hampson just trying to contain Leeds at the moment. We're seeing that uh, last move where the referee played the advantage. Wasn't the best uh, effort there from uh, Notto, but here come Leeds again at the edge of the area. They won a free kick there. It was uh, Ruta that hit the deck. The referee says uh, no foul. And uh, McCarthy plays that one to Harwood Bellis. Smallbone first time uh, pass forward, and that will be a, a free kick in uh, favour of uh, Southampton. It's a sliding challenge there from uh, Junior Furpo on uh, David Brooks. And it's John Brooks, our referee, just uh, calling uh, Junior Firpo. I can't imagine this would be a yellow card uh, so early in the game. It's more of a clumsy one, really, rather than a reckless one. Yeah, I think you could maybe put that put that challenge down to a slip more than anything from Junior Firpo. Of course, like I mentioned, the grass will be very, very wet and slippy in the opening moments or so, given the rain that's falling in London. But we've just seen the possession stat pop up on our screens here. 70% possession for Leeds compared to 30% for Southampton. That is the exact opposite of what Russell Martin will have wanted. Southampton are a side who want to have all of the ball. They want to maintain possession. And so far, they, they simply just haven't kept the ball for any longer than all of about 30 seconds. And it's Leeds who are looking to come forward every time with some really slick passing. And they've got another chance here now as Somerville goes forward. He tries a little a sneaky outside of the boot pass out towards Notto. It doesn't quite reach him. Southampton are now back in possession here with uh, Walker Peters, but he's trying to dribble past two Leeds players at the edge of his own box. He plays his square now to uh, Stevens over towards the left hand side for uh, Ryan Fraser. And he plays it inside for Flynn Downs. That's better from Southampton. They're able to uh, play their way out of pressure for once after this uh, rather nervy start. It's now back with uh, Bednarek and uh, Harwood Bellis, two uh, tall centre-backs for uh, Southampton. Bednarek again, just uh, fallen out of favour with the uh, new national team coach as well. There's uh, no guarantee he's going to make that uh, Poland squad for the Euros, Jan Bednarek, as Southampton won a free kick there. They were caught up in possession inside their own half. I didn't think there was too much in that. It's actually gone out for a uh, throw to Leeds after all of that. Walker Peters now going back towards uh, Harwood Bellis. But uh, from uh, Southampton's point of view, despite this good start from Leeds, 
They'll argue that after 10 minutes, Leeds have made the better start. They've had two tame efforts at the goalkeeper, which were very easy. And Southampton will now try and get themselves into the game, ease themselves into this game now. Yeah, look, they've weathered the storm in the opening 10 minutes. Leeds haven't really created a real clear-cut opportunity. At least the chance that they have created, they've not really taken with any conviction. And Southampton will think we've weathered the storm in the opening 10. Let's see if we can now try and build on it and try and grow ourselves into the game. And I think that'll be the tale of the entire match, really. Punch for punch, 10 minutes or so, Great and there's an opportunity here. Now here. Is a chance for Armstrong, the flag stays down, he plays it in since a small bone, it's charged down. Second chance there for Armstrong, still no flag. But Southampton have a second chance here now, down the left-hand side with Fraser. He gets it in towards Aribo, Aribo under pressure. Bit of a lazy pass from him there, and then Fraser tries to dive in. He can't win the ball back for Southampton, and it's cleared up towards the halfway line. Uh, Notto has stayed down. Southampton don't want to put the ball out, the referee's not making them stop play either. Notto has uh, picked himself up, Fraser still has the ball here for Southampton. It all started with one quick diagonal ball down the left-hand side and suddenly uh, Leeds were caught out. But in the end, no dangerous uh, strike on goal. It's now back on the halfway line here with uh, Bednarek. Uh, it's a short ball into Downs. Back to Bednarek who starts striding forward. Pass out towards Aribo on the left. He gets towards the edge of the area, tries to thread a pass through towards Armstrong. Aribo wants the free kick and the referee's going to give it to him. I didn't think there was too much in that. And so with Southampton attacking the uh, the end of the field where the Leeds fans are, most of the Leeds fans weren't happy with that decision either. No, I can't imagine they will have been. It was, certainly took a while for John Brooks to make that decision. But we're going to have a look again at this Adam Armstrong chance. I mean, it's a brilliant ball through to Adam Armstrong. And it just felt, the man, who's second top goal scorer in the championship this season, 21 goals. You think surely he's going to pull the trigger and find the bottom corner. He's been credited this season for being a better team player, 13 league assists as well. It's a top assister for Southampton this season. But but you just felt in that opportunity on his left foot, fire it towards that bottom corner, make it difficult for Ian Melier to get down and palm it away from goal. Instead, he went for the pass. I don't think Smallbone was expecting it, but it was also behind the uh, Irish international. And in the end, Southampton couldn't make the most of it. But that straight away shows how dangerous Southampton can be in forward areas, particularly with their passing ability. We've not seen it enough so far in the opening 12 minutes, but that was much better from Russell Martin's men. And it you know, keeps Leeds on their toes. It shows that there are two teams in this contest. They're going to have to be awake and aware uh, uh, along the back line. Southampton with this free kick now. It's going to be Smallbone going for goal and Melier dives across and makes the save. He made his mind up early there, Will Smallbone. He was uh, in discussions there with uh, David Brooks. But it was Southampton central midfielder that went for goal and it wasn't a bad effort at all. It was right by the post and it's a good save. Yeah, how many times have we seen set pieces be the difference at Wembley in playoff finals? I think back to 2020, Joe Bryan scoring a worldy of a free kick to send Fulham up against Brentford not too long ago. Set pieces can prove to be the difference. Southampton have got another one here. Here comes Smallbone's uh, corner kick. Three uh, players going for that at the edge of the six-yard box. All of them missed it, including the goalkeeper, uh, Melier. I'm just wondering whether that's taken a final touch off a uh, Leeds man. I don't think he has. He's going to be out for a, a goal kick uh, to Leeds after all of that. So that's pretty much the first time we've seen any kind of attacking threat from Southampton. Taking them around 10-11 uh, minutes to finally get on the front foot. And yeah, we just see from that replay, Melier never got to it, but neither did any other uh, Leeds player. So it is a uh, goal kick here to uh, Daniel Farker's side. They've taken it short and it's now down the uh, right-hand side here with uh, Joe Rodon. Does well to get away from the uh, challenge of Armstrong. Grief now squared to uh, Kamara. Out towards the uh, left-hand side here for Somerville. He's got an overlap from uh, Junior Firpo if he wants to use it. He's just been uh, held up here by uh, Smallbone. Goes inside towards uh, Piru. Again, he's got uh, two Southampton players there for company. Back to uh, Glenn Kamara. And uh, Grief now playing it back towards uh, Ampadu and Rodon on the halfway line. It's uh, trying to uh, start again now in uh, Southampton territory. And eventually, it's uh, Ampadu playing it back towards his uh, keeper, Melier. 14 minutes gone. Unofficial independent off-tube studio commentary. It is goalless between Leeds and Southampton at uh, Wembley Stadium. Leeds certainly making the uh, the better start in terms of the uh, being on the front foot, trying to uh, exert their own uh, dominance on the match. But it's, things are just starting to level out now in these last few minutes. And Leeds are actually getting a little bit bogged down inside their own half now. Yeah, they are a little bit. But I think this is where the, the experience inside this Leeds squad comes into it. I mean, if you look at the average age of the, the two starting 11s, Leeds just under 24 years of age. Southampton is just under 28. So there's more experience in that Southampton side. And we're seeing that they are they were able to weather the, the early storm from Leeds then grew into the game. And now they're settling into their game plan. And it's forcing Leeds into a couple of mistakes. They've just played the ball straight out of 
play for a throw and under no real pressure. It was Junior Furpo, I think, who just put it out on the near side. Now Southampton have got a chance to have a bit of possession. This is, I think, how this game's going to play out. Who is going to bite first in terms of making that crucial error and who's going to be able to stick to the game plan for as long as possible? Southampton, I think, have done quite well so far to deal with Leeds' pressure and then play their style of football. Now are Leeds going to be able to do the same where they deal with Southampton slowing the pace down? Are they going to be able to turn it up when they need to and they have the opportunity to? Well, it's uh, as I say, the, certainly the first few minutes of this game were much better for Leeds and Hampton have now responded a little bit. I think from uh, the point of view of uh, trying to sort of uh, wear down the opposition, it is probably going to be either a mistake or a bit of brilliance that's going to uh, perhaps give us the, uh, the first goal in this game. There is a Leeds man down on the uh, right-hand side. It is Willie Notso, and I think this time Leeds are going to put the ball out themselves because Notso was down earlier in the half, managed to get himself up before uh, the ball needed to be put out of play. This time, uh, the young Italian is really complaining about some pain in his back, it looks like. Yeah, he, he, I think he got a bit of a collision as he went up to go challenge for a ball. It's Jack Stevens who's just battling away with it. Maybe a little bit of a knee in the back on him. He does actually just land quite awkwardly there on his back. It's not really contact from Stevens. I don't think that causes it too much. Yeah, so be worrying for Leeds. It's not one of those a back injury where you can run it off particularly quickly. It is going to be a case of is Willie Nonto going to have the strength to just be able to battle on with the pain momentarily and then get on with it once it starts to ease. We'll wait and see. He's back on his feet. I'm not sure whether the physios have been on the pitch to have a look at the Italian or whether it is a case of he's just been able to get back up himself and walk it off. Nonetheless, it will be worrying for Leeds if so early on in the game. Nonto is going to have issues. He's been a very important player for Leeds. He doesn't necessarily get the goals and assists that you'd like, but certainly the impact he has at just occupying fullbacks and defenders and, you know, being able to make be busy and get into space and cause issues. That's what Leeds will need in this game and they'll be happy that he's back to his feet. They'll just be hoping that that injury is not serious enough for it to too seriously affect his game. Well, he's uh, moving around quite freely for the time being. The ball's actually been headed down to him there by Perot and he tries to play it back to uh, Joel Perot but that is overhit by some way. No chance of uh, Perot getting on the end of that one. Easy for uh, Alex McCarthy as Southampton now trying to start again from the back here with uh, Bednarik square ball to uh, Stevens. Closed down there by Piro, so it's uh, going back towards the uh, Saints goalkeeper again. Experienced uh, Alex McCarthy, Harwood Bellis now up towards the halfway line. Armstrong under pressure there from uh, Rodon, loses the ball quite easily in the end. And Leeds now have a chance here down the uh, centre here with uh, Ruta. Goes over towards uh, Notso, back towards uh, the halfway line here now as the Leeds just slow things down. It's uh, Kamara back to Rodon now with Ampadu. Junior Firpo being closed down here by Smallbone, finds a pass out towards Somerville. But again, Southampton just aren't giving Leeds the sort of space that they were giving them in the first five or six minutes. It's just getting a little bit more congested inside the Southampton half now. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think what will maybe worry Leeds a little bit is just the lack of impact that Gruev and Kamara are having when Leeds have the ball in the midfield. Those two need to come forward a little bit quicker and try offer, try offer themselves in the midfield. Because at the minute, the likes of Smallbone and Downs are just making it very, very difficult inside the middle of the park. Here come Leeds now down the left, though. It was a nice bit of link-up play between Junior Firpo and... And uh, Somerville, the ball getting towards the edge of the area, but it wouldn't quite uh, stick with uh, Jorginho Ruter. It's back with Somerville here in midfield. He does well to get that ball away from Downs. And then he get a, gets a pass back from Greer. He tries to thread a ball in towards Notto. He can't get there first time, but he's able to get there just ahead of Fraser. He then tries to play a ball out towards Gray, but that's a good uh, challenge from Fraser. It's also a great challenge from Gray to win the ball back. Fraser wants a free kick. Referee says nothing, and it's a, a cross in from Gray, which is overhit in the end. No chance of Ruter getting on the end of that one. <coughs> Kamara now keeps the move alive for Leeds down the left-hand side. He plays it to short in towards Ruta. Two players closing him down, and then Ruta's ball towards the edge of the area. Just doesn't quite any, find any teammate before uh, Somerville gives a free kick away. David Brooks brought down at the edge of his own box, but uh, that was actually better from Leeds in terms of finding space at the edge of the area, but just, just couldn't get a shot away. Yeah, no, they couldn't. They, just, they, they never really looked like they were building towards a shot or more that they were just building in and around the penalty area, hoping from a, for a mistake from Southampton. It nearly came from Ryan Fraser, who was asking for a foul from John Brooks, but he was always going down to down there, whether the challenge came in from Archie Gray or not. So he was never going to get that free kick from the referee, and that's what they've got to be careful full of Southampton. Look, I think that they've dealt with the pressure from Leeds at times well so far in the opening 20 minutes and don't get me wrong, they've come forward nicely when they've had the opportunity, but they are making the odd mistake here and there along the backhand and they've got to be careful because Leeds will punish you if you give them too many opportunities to do so. Southampton are now trying to get forward themselves here with uh, Walker-Peters. 
He's got a lot of uh, space here down the right-hand side. Finds David Brooks. Brooks being closed down by Kamara. And it's uh, now back towards the halfway line as Stevens found himself in a bit more of a central position. Hampton trying to start again here now with uh, Harwood Bellis uh, down the right-hand side. And uh, Rebo was calling for it. He wasn't particularly well marked at the edge of the area, but uh, safety first here from Southampton. They're just quite happy to keep possession a long way out from goal. It's down the right-hand side now for uh, Walker-Peters. Just playing a quick one-two with uh, Brooks before it's back towards uh, 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 Harwood Bellis around about the uh, halfway line. Sun has come out now at Wembley. Well, it looks like we're going to get all four seasons at uh, Wembley this afternoon. This is often the case uh, this time of year across England. It's now with... Uh, Walker Peters, his pass towards uh, Smallbone. Uh, Somerville gets himself in the way, and then Smallbone tries to push him out of the way and gives away a free kick. Yeah, they're really struggling at the minute, Southampton, just to be able to stop that pass initially getting to the player. Smallbone needs to try and get in front of Somerville rather than allowing the Dutchman to get the ball under control and then wait for the challenge because he's always going to go down once that challenge comes in from Smallbone. So that's why he's got to get to the ball first rather than allowing uh, Somerville to get man between ball. That's the issue that Southampton have got at the minute. Daniel Fark is not happy with his team. He's not happy with their build-up play. Well, he's not happy with what Leeds just did. They just cleared the ball long and it went straight out for a uh, for a goal kick and just lip-reading them. I think he was saying something on the lines of play, as in, you know, keep the ball, try to try to do something with it, don't give it to Southampton too easily. But I uh, could say uh, both managers are dressed by the same tailor today, sort of uh, dark tops and uh, dark trousers, sort of smart casual look, I think, for both uh, managers today rather than the uh, suited and booted that you normally see at uh, Wembley final. It's now Junior Firpo under pressure. They're having to play it back uh, quickly towards Melier. He gets a lot of distance on that uh, clear. It's headed forward by Harwood Bellis, but it's uh, straight to uh, Firpo down the Leeds United left. Uh, Piro then plays a nice uh, square pass over towards Ruta and suddenly it opens up for Leeds. It's Ruta heading towards the edge of the area. He's got support here from Archie Gray. Gray on the right-hand side just uh, takes a touch and then uh, puts in a left-footed ball, which is just a little bit too high there for Somerville and uh, coming in at the far post junior fear but that ball was already going out for a goal kick so again it's better build up from Leeds but again the final ball was just a little bit lacking yeah a little bit I think if Firpo anticipates that ball's coming in he makes the run to the back post before Gray crosses the ball if there's one thing that you can maybe lay a criticism to with Archie Gray in comparison to playing uh, Connor Roberts at full back is the delivery's maybe not there from Archie Gray a lot of the time he has to cut back on himself or try and play a short pass rather than sending the delivery straight in with Connor Roberts you know that that delivery maybe five or six times out of ten is going to be on the money and he's going to be able to put that cross in straight away so it's maybe something you can develop in Archie Gray's game if he's going to commit to playing fullback the entirety of the time and it's something that Leeds are just going to have to deal with in this game that crosses from the right hand side aren't necessarily going to be fantastic as often as they'd maybe like quality is going to be a little bit off it often is in these finals because the teams just feel so much uh, pressure that's why when you get that one chance that one loose ball from an opposition defender you've got to try and capitalize on it as uh, Southampton now inside the Leeds half but again there's no easy route to goal for the Saints here they're back towards uh, Harwood Bellis now stood around the, the halfway line thought about a long ball but again Leeds aren't playing a particularly high line but they're making it difficult. just as I say that a ball is straight through to Armstrong there's no offside Armstrong puts it in the back of the net 23 minutes gone the flag stays down and Adam Armstrong uh, perhaps slightly cheekily there just turns and smiles at those Leeds fans who are facing him but it's uh, 23 and a half minutes on the clock. It's Southampton who take the lead. I hadn't even, didn't get a chance to finish the fact that Leeds weren't playing a particularly high line. They were allowing Southampton to get closer to their penalty. We're a pass is threaded through, and it looks like Armstrong is onside. Yeah, absolutely. We need to see a replay here of who it is that steps out of the back line to leave that space. I believe it's Ethan Ampadu who is completely out of position. I mean, you look, Rodon and Archie Gray are both playing Armstrong onside, but it's Ethan Ampadu who's nowhere to be seen. Along that back four, you see Gruev's asking him to step back in. Kamara's the one who's got to go to Smallbone. Ampadu steps out of the back four and leaves all that space in behind for uh, Adam Armstrong. And if there's anybody in this match you do not want to leave space in behind for, it is the Southampton striker. It is a terrific finish from Armstrong. Terrible defending from Leeds. And how many times have I said already this afternoon, the errors are what are going to be the difference in this uh, in this game and to determine who goes up to the Premier League. And the first first error comes from Leeds, the first significant error comes from Leeds and their captain for the afternoon, Ethan Ampadu, who's been fantastic all season and they now have a, a mountain to climb really because Southampton so far have been able to weather every storm that Leeds have thrown at them. 
They have, they have, and the goal, I mean, to say it's come out of nowhere, I mean, it's, it's the first clear-cut chance Southampton have had, but we're at 24, nearly 25 minutes. It is Leeds United nil, Southampton 1, and it will be Luke to take us through to half-time. Cheers, Paul, as Firpo has it on the near side. He's forced to go back to Ampadu. He'll then go all the way back to Ilan Melier in the penalty area. The Frenchman had nothing he could do with that finish from Adam Armstrong. It's a terrific strike from the former Blackburn man. And it's put Southampton in a really good position inside the first half. And Leeds now have got to play on the front foot. They've got to try and find themselves an equaliser and make sure that they don't fall too behind in this game. They can't allow Southampton to get a second goal. Daniel Farker really not looking happy on the touchline at the minute. We just see the stat pop, pop, pop up on our screen. 25 points won from losing positions this season for Leeds. It's the second most in the championship They'll have to do more this season as Adam Armstrong, we get confirmation, 24th goal of the season. It's been a terrific season. A man who struggled so much last year in the Premier League has really found his form in the Championship this season. Southampton look to build out from the back as a foul comes in from Junior Firpo on David Brooks. And Southampton have another opportunity to gain possession once again. But it's good build-up play again. They're just drawing leads forward to Southampton. And they're able just to play it over the top, more or less. They are, but this is a real test for Leeds now because they made such a good start. Put Southampton on the ropes, but weren't really able to get those blows in to actually try and take the lead themselves. Now Southampton have landed a punch and they've taken the lead. Is there a way now for Leeds to try and get some sort of rhythm? Because right now Southampton are trying to push forward and they're in attack down the right-hand side. Yeah, they're going to have to deal with this opportunity here. Southampton have the ball with David Brooks. Plays it inside to Flynn Downs. Rides the challenge nicely. Plays Adam Armstrong. Now onto the right-hand side. It's Cal Walker-Peters. He wants to have an option in the penalty area. Doesn't have one and then tries to send the ball in towards the near post. Good block from Furpo. Out for a corner on the near side. Southampton really building it up nicely. And I have to say, a lot of this forward play, strangely enough, is coming from Taylor Harwood Bellis at centre half. Some of the passes he's playing forward through the gaps to the likes of Flynn Downs and Adam Armstrong have been really, really impressive. Of course, came up to, well, got promoted with Burnley last season. He was on loan from Manchester City was part of one of the, the best championship sides we've ever seen, was sent back on loan by Manchester City, this time to Southampton, and he's really showing his worth so far in this game, as the corner comes in, it's a low one, it's a poor one, and now can Leeds come forward on the counter-attack, is Gray, sends the ball forward, it's a shocking wow. ball and I think both of us can agree there, Paul it's not a good decision at all from Archie Gray, because that was a huge huge opportunity, 4 on 2, more or less for Leeds. 4 on 2, and Gray just flicked the ball forward into open space he didn't need to, he had 3 teammates ahead of him all were all of them were still inside the leads half so they couldn't have been offside he could have he had so many options rather than just poking a ball forward hoping for the best and in the end he hits it at least 10 yards away from his nearest teammate and uh, Leeds just lost possession there but it's uh, as I say this is an important stage in the game for Leeds now Brooks is down looks like he's uh, complaining of a facial injury referee though is not stopping play and Leeds are in possession yeah they are it's Willie Nonto on the right hand side we'll just go back to Ethan Ampadu He's now going to look to try and bring it forward. David Brooks is still on the floor. And now John Brooks does eventually stop the play. I mean, originally he was holding onto his face. He is now holding onto his shoulder and his hamstring. And that's led to John Brooks asking for the physios to come on. So it certainly is a strange decision from the referee. Who I think has so far governed this game really quite nicely. As we're now seeing pictures of Daniel Farker just talking to Archie Gray. I think we've seen the best and worst of the 18-year-old so far in this game. I think at times he's come forward really nicely with the ball. But on other occasions, he's shown his inexperience and not knowing what well, to that, do. That you, you just said it yourself. It's the inexperience. When you've got a talented young player, what you want, is for that, so that fearlessness to come through and for him to do something unexpected to surprise the opposition. But the flip side of that is he's not had many minutes. He's certainly not had many minutes in big finals like this. And so as a result of that, it is going to lead to these uh, mistakes where he gives the ball away. It's lovely build-up here from Southampton, but I mean, the Leeds offside line, it's not a line. It's in stages, isn't it? There's two or three different players trying to create the offside before eventually Armstrong is clearly onside and uh, finishes uh, with confidence. But uh, that, that wasn't good defending from Leeds that they, they, they need to make sure that they get that sorted because Adamson will try and exploit that again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when you've got a double pivot, pivot made up of Grev and Kamara, you need them to cover the likes of Smallbone and Rebo. Ethan Ampadu clearly didn't feel that Kamara was doing his job, was forced, it felt that he needed to step out of the defensive line. That allowed the space in behind for Adam Armstrong. And it was a terrific finish into the back of the net to give it Southampton the lead. Russell Martin, of course, was promoted at Wembley with Norwich City in 2015, was captain of the side that year. 
was managed, of course, as well by Daniel Farker. They had a bit of a falling out, which eventually led to Russell Martin leaving the club and have now is, of course, at his third club as manager previously at MK Dons and Swansea City. We just see pictures as well of Che Adams warming up. He was a doubt going into this game. He's got 16 league goals this season, as has Che Adams, but he did spend the full week training and Russell Martin clearly feels that he's fit enough to have an impact in this game but it will have to be off the bench if he is to come on but at the minute they don't need him do they Southampton they, they, they don't look like they're going to need to press for another goal at the minute because Leeds don't look like they're making any inroads they're not I mean the goals come about uh, six minutes ago since then Leeds haven't really had any kind of impact on the Southampton uh, penalty area they're trying to start something now they're in midfield now with Somerville potentially with a move with Firpo down the left yeah Firpo now on the left hand side he's played into the corner by Crescencio Somerville so just go back to the Dutchman half hour on the clock independent off tube studio based commentary it's Leeds nil Southampton 1 it's Kamara under pressure there from David Brooks we'll just play it square to Ilya Gruev now onto the right hand side for Archie Gray back inside to Gruev he's under pressure here from Flynn Downs so we'll just go back to Joe Road on nice feet from him to get away from Armstrong Gruev now about 40 yards away from goal turns back on himself and plays it to Archie Gray on the right hand side tries to play it back inside to Gruev who then brings down Joe Aribo and it will be a free kick for Southampton inside their own half and too often now Leeds' play is just breaking down in and around the Southampton half and I have to say, just quickly break off, David Brooks looks in an awful lot of discomfort there, holding onto his shoulder. He, I don't think he's going to make it to half-time. I'm not either. I mean, he, he, if, he, if it was a full-on dislocation, he wouldn't be able to move his shoulder. He wouldn't be able to touch it like he just was. But he's clearly done something to his shoulder there, David Brooks. And uh, as I say, he's, uh, he was part of the, the uh, Bournemouth team that lost to, uh, to Brentford in the, uh, the playoff semis the year that Brentford eventually did beat uh, Swansea in the final. But uh, say he's, he's had a, a tough few years, David Brooks. I think it's absolutely fantastic that he's uh, back to full fitness and playing, starting in a, a massive Wembley final like this when you consider the health problems he's, he's had to go through. But he's, he looks in a little bit of pain now, and it's not one of those things that's just going to go away in a minute or two unless he's jarred his shoulder and he can perhaps run it off. But even now we can see he's actually running with his left arm tucked in a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, they have got options on the bench. I'll bring you those momentarily. As Leeds look to come forward with Willie Nonto. A terrific challenge comes in from Ryan Fraser. He's not happy that the throw-in went the way of Leeds United, but nonetheless, it will be a Leeds ball. I mean, they have got the likes of Samuel Adozi, Che Adams, as I mentioned already, Ross Stewart, Camel Dean Sulemana. There's four attacking options there that could come on to replace David Brooks, and it looks as though that replacement is going to have to come at some point. We'll wait to see whether Russell Martin has sent anybody to go warm up as Leeds look to come forward with a chip ball towards Willie Nonto. Archie Gray wins the return ball, tries to head it towards Willie on to and eventually it's put out of play for a throw and by Jan Bednarek on the far side so Leeds have an opportunity to look to try and bring the ball forward as Archie Gray will just throw it back to Joe Rodon and now Glenn Kamara who's under pressure from Flynn Downs will just go back to Ethan Ampadu he'll then look to try and bring it forward into the Southampton half chip ball over the top looking towards Willie Nonto but it's massively over hitting straight into the hands of Alex McCarthy and it looks as though we are going to see a substitution from Southampton sooner rather than later and it will be Samuel Adozi who is going to come on in replacement for David Brooks well, Leeds will still try and play and try and cause out some problems before that substitution can be made as Walker Peters surrounded by white shirts plays it back to Harwood Bellis who will just kick it against Joel Pirro and out for a throw in on the near side Samuel Adozi is someone who certainly can have an impact for Southampton. Six league goals this season, but it will, of course, be devastating for David Brooks and for Southampton that they are going to have to make that change. David Brooks certainly made an impact on loan from Bournemouth this season, but yeah, he's going to go down. He can't continue. He's done something to that shoulder. I'm not quite sure what it is, but straight away he's buried his head into his shirt. He looks absolutely devastated as the Welsh international. Well, he does. I mean, it's so, it's so difficult for him. He's, he's worked so hard to be back in a position where he can be uh, playing in a team that are challenging in, in these sorts of finals. He's in he's in the starting eleven for a Wembley final, and and yet even before the uh, the half time break, he's he's got tears in his eyes. Uh, David Brooks, as I say, it's it's an emotional thing because, of course, with his. Uh, uh, with his cancer treatment in the last few years, it's been it's, it's been absolutely fantastic for him to be able to get back into the uh, to the team. And I know for a fact, having heard a few uh, interviews, that uh, certainly uh, there are fans who do find uh, what his whole story very inspiring. But uh, that's unfortunately that the nature of professional sport. It's all fine margins. You fall awkwardly. You have a slight jarring of your uh, uh, of your shoulder joint just as you hit the deck, and that's all it takes. And so uh, Sam Edozi now uh, he has a chance to try and uh, make a name for his, himself. He was uh, 
struggling to make a real impact for Southampton towards the end of last season. Uh, but now he has a chance here in the playoff final to get them back into the Premier League. But it really is sad. I mean, initially I thought he was just a little bit tearful. He actually is hes properly crying now, David Brooks. He's really, really devastated. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he signed on loan uh, for Southampton from Bournemouth in January. Has gone on to make a big impact for Southampton. Two goals and, uh, and five assists for the Saints. But as well, just his general play on the pitch has been fantastic. Whether they look to make that move permanent or not, I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's dependent on whether they get promoted or not this afternoon. But it is devastating nonetheless for David Brooks who's clearly enjoyed his time on the south coast with Southampton only moved down the road of course from Bournemouth but he certainly kicked on in the second half of the season for Russell Martin but they will have to deal with the remaining time left in this match without him Samuel Adozi the man who's come on to replace him and Leeds will look to try and make an impact given that they've had to make that tactical change so early on, Southampton. And they've got the ball here with Crescencio Somerville. Pirro trying to run away from him. S uh, Somerville just didn't have any options to give it to there. And the tackle comes in from Stevens, And Southampton can look to try and get it clear. And they do very, very easily. It's a strange one, that, because Somerville started uh, in the middle. Pirro was slightly over to the to the right. And that's where Somerville was going. And then Pirro immediately darted off to the left. So as, as you said, he had no one to pass to. And eventually Somerville just uh, ran into a wall of Southampton players. And he lost the ball. But that all came from Southampton just being a little bit too lazy in midfield. It was a loose ball that Leeds were able to pick off. And uh, that's something that Leeds can try and capitalise on as well. If Southampton are already thinking about perhaps slowing the game down and just being a little bit more methodical, then Leeds have to try and pick off any loose ball. Yeah, they certainly have to. As Smallbone now has it. Plays it inside his own penalty area to Taylor Harwood-Bellis. And now forward for Flynn Downs. He's going to look to try and play a raking right-footed pass towards the left-hand side and Joe Aribo. But it's dealt with well by Ilya Gruev and by Archie Gray. And Gruev does well to win his side a free kick inside his own half. Joe Aribo, of course, signed at the beginning of last season from Rangers. Played in midfield four times. Maybe played a little bit further forward than he was used to in the Premier League, but has kicked on well this season for Southampton. Been a huge part of this Russell Martin side. As Leeds look to try and bring it forward on the right-hand side with Joe Roden. Forced to go back, though, to Elan Melier, who's outside his penalty area momentarily. And he'll play it onto the left-hand side for Junior Furpo, who is preferred ahead of Sam Byram this afternoon. Those two have interchanged throughout the season, but it is Junior Furpo, the more attacking of the two options, who is preferred this afternoon by Daniel Fark. He's yet to really have an impact in the forward areas, though, the Spaniard. And Leeds just simply haven't been able to offer too much in the final third, particularly since that goal came in from Adam Armstrong as Archie Gray is fouled hard there by Flynn Downs and he wins a free kick. Does the young 18-year-old as he goes down holding onto his right shin. John Brooks signalling that a free kick will be taken by the side from Yorkshire. He's at least just taking the time over it, looking to maybe even just gather their breath back momentarily because it has been a pretty breathless first half of them. They found themselves chasing the ball more often than not in this first half. They've been chasing the ball a lot of Leeds and it, and it has been a difficult half for them. Even, even before the goal was scored against them, I thought that they were just struggling to have that, that impact in the final third. I mean, the actual the amount of service that Peru has had in this first half is, is limited just a couple of passes. Arguably, he's got himself into the wrong position a few times as well. But uh, Leeds need to do more in that final third. They've got themselves a free kick a long way from goal, but at least it's a chance to try and move something with a set piece. It's a very industrial challenge there from uh, uh, Jan Bednarek. And that's awful. I mean, he sort of leading foot goes into uh, Root, so then he sort of takes him out with his left knee as well. So uh, a yellow card there for Bednarek. I don't think he can argue with it. No, he certainly can't. First yellow card of the playoff final goes to a Salanta man and Jan Bednarek. And the money brought down Jorginho Russo just simply has not been involved at all for, for Leeds, really, in this first half. 15 league assists this season, but he just hasn't been able to get on the ball anywhere near as much as he would like. He was very instrumental in that big... 4-0 victory at Allen Road against Norwich City, but just hasn't been involved at all this afternoon as Leeds look to bring it forward through Glenn Kamara inside the centre circle. Onto the right-hand side for Archie Gray. He's got a fair bit of space in front of him, and now Ryan Fraser will just come across and try and put some pressure on him. So it goes inside to Gruev, to Kamara, and then Gruev once again, and now Ampadu can bring it forward. Onto the left-hand side for Junior Furpo. He's got two Sampton players in front of him. Just goes back to Ampadu. And now Furpo once again. Can he find somebody in the middle? Tries to find Rutter. Well read though by Will Smallbone. And out for a throw-in on the near side. And Leeds will look to take it quickly with Furpo. Plays it down the line 
for Crescencio Somerville. Squared up by Carl Walker Peters. Will shift it onto his right foot, then back onto his left, looking to get it into the penalty area. Does well to win a corner kick in the end off of Walker Peters and an opportunity for Leeds from the set piece to get the ball into the box. Slowly but surely, Leeds are starting to get some sort of uh, advantage in this game again. In the last few minutes, Southampton really haven't been able to do anything other than just uh, withstand this lead, Leeds pressure. And uh, finally, a set piece here for Leeds. Uh, to try and test this Southampton defence. It's going to be uh, Somerville. Thought they might play it short there, the way Kamara had gone short, but it looks like it's just going to be a direct uh, in-swinger. Yeah, the right right arm of Crescencio Somerville goes up. He's going to send the ball in with his right foot. It's not a bad delivery. Well dealt with, though, by Alex McCarthy. Punched it away from the penalty area. Gruev will head back in towards Piro. Can it fall for Kamara? It can't. A good tackle comes in in the end, but I think the free kick has been given maybe for an offside. A lot of Southampton players were appealing for the offside against Joao Piro. We'll see a replay of it momentarily it's a great punch from Alex McCarthy the header comes in from Gruev it was Rodon who was offside coming back on to an onside position I'm not sure what the referee gave a free kick for maybe the challenge on Bednarek but that was much better from Leeds getting the ball into the penalty area much better yeah I mean famously McCarthy for all his experience for all his shot stopping skills Alex McCarthy has never been a sort of grade A goalkeeper when it comes to dealing with crosses and that was a decent ball but he made that look like a very acrobatic save and really was just claiming a across and uh, that should be some sort of encouragement for Leeds if they get those balls close to the uh, goalkeeper in the six shot box they might get some joy from it and Southampton playing out from the back after that free kick have lost the ball here now yeah they have and they found Rutter on the left hand side of Leeds he's squared up by Cal Walker Peters Rutter left footed ball in towards the penalty area well dealt with by Harwood Bellis it is going to fall though to Somerville who's under pressure from Madoz he does want to keep a hold of it tries one too many skills and he's given the ball away and that was a firm challenge that came in from both Downs and Gruev both of which have just got up and got straight on with it fair play to both the midfielders there because I think we both looked at that challenge there Paul and Grimish just slightly That's something out of the 70s that wasn't <laughs> it they charging into each other then at full speed but as you say two midfielders get up didn't worry about it at all and uh, play on and he leads are playing on they are it's with Gruev plays it centrally to Piro flick around the corner for Willie Nonto it's going to fall back to Gruev good challenge comes in from Aribo but Rutter brings it down inside the penalty area once again cleared away by Jan Bednarek and out for a throw in and this has been probably the best passage of play Leeds have had since the opening 10 minutes or so as they are putting a fair bit of pressure on Southampton but they're just riding with the punches at the minute of the Saints as Ampadu has it along the halfway line just plays it back into his own half for Joe Rodon inside the centre circle lays it off to Ilya Gruev and now onto the right hand side for Archie Gray who started to grow into this game just a little bit more in the last five minutes or so as we tick closer towards the half-time mark. Gray will just go back to his captain, Ampadu. Now onto the left-hand side for Firpo. Bit of space for the former Barcelona man to step into. Plays it centrally to Jorginho Rutter. He can now try and drive forward away from Flynn Downs. Great play from Rutter. Inside the penalty area towards Firpo. The challenge comes in. Somerville brings it down and then the referee blows for a free quick kick against the Leeds number 10. It's Harwood Bellis who's gone down injured and the second yellow card will be handed out. The first yellow card for a Leeds player and I have to say on first view it looked like this challenge was all ball we're going to see a replay of it here how much of the ball does Somerville get he gets a fair bit but the studs are raised just slightly they are I'm, they were, I'm old enough to remember a time where if you touch the ball with your studs first that's all that mattered and if you got the man afterwards it didn't matter as long as you won the ball now of course it's not as straightforward as that there's got to be that extra level of care and the referee felt as though Somerville just a little bit reckless I mean I, I think the ball was there to be won if, if he doesn't go for that then we create him for letting Harwood Bellis just clear it so I think he has to try and go for it but potentially could have just uh, kept those uh, studs down a little bit lower but that's actually a nice little time out for Southampton because Leeds really were piling on the pressure. They certainly were I think a little bit of gamesmanship there more than anything from Taylor Harwood Bellis maybe con John Brooks into falling for that being a yellow card and a free kick but nonetheless a chance for Southampton to retain possession momentarily. As Alex McCarthy sends the ball long towards a dozy. Good header comes in from Flynn Downs. And now Samson can maybe look to bring it forward on the right hand side through a dozy. Nice footwork to get away from Firpo. And then he's brought down by the Spaniard. That will be a free kick. And Firpo complains, but he did catch a dozy from behind. And John Brooks had no option other than to give a free kick there. He's, the referee has no option, as you say. It's not much of a, a foul, but it's enough of one. Uh, to see, as we can see, a, a quick graphic demonstrating that the last 15 passes that have been made in the final third, 14 out of those 15 passes have come from a Leeds player in the Southampton half. And that pass we just saw a moment ago uh, was uh, the first one for Southampton in a long time. But they've got themselves a free kick in a decent position here. It's over on the right-hand side. It's probably about 30, maybe 35 yards out from goal. 
on an angle, but uh, if Smallbone can get the right ball in here, it could put, uh, cause problems for Leeds. Yes, it certainly could, Will Smallbone, standing over this set piece. Of course, we've seen this before this afternoon. Leeds try and take uh, try and take a bit of pressure towards Southampton. As Smallbone plays it inside to Adam Armstrong. Great save comes in from Melier, and he's just about cleared away by Leeds. Chance for a counter-attack is Nonto on the right-hand side, brought down by Ryan Fraser, and that has to be a yellow card. I mean, Russell Martin's absolutely fuming on the touchline. But nothing other than a yellow card can be given there for the Newcastle low knee. It's not a good challenge there from Fraser. It's cynical, but it is also clever. It's, it's the taking one for the team. It's the dictionary definition of taking one for the team there from Ryan Fraser because he knows that he's not going to be able to win a foot race with Notto. And he's thinking, well, if I'm going to foul him, I'll foul him on the halfway line rather than let him get anywhere near our penalty area. Leeds have now taken the free kick short and Rutter's chasing this one all the way to the line, but he won't be able to keep it in play. It's out for a goal kick and we're into five minutes of injury time. Yeah, five Five minutes added on at the end of this first half. Of course, Leeds have had their moments to put pressure on Southampton, but how many times have we seen that so far in this game? They just haven't been able to make it pays. We just see a replay there of that strike from Adam Armstrong. I'm not sure whether it was going in or not. Melier's not to know that. It's a terrific save to deny the forward a second goal in this game. I mean, it's gone through the legs of Piro, and it's a really good stop it there is, from Melier. It is a great stop for Melier, and it's just that little detail, that, that save. It just gets away from Harwood Bellis, because if that had dropped anywhere closer to him, he could have been able to tap it into an empty net and be talking about a 2-0 Southampton lead. But uh, Melier keeps his side in it with that initial save and then just gets that little bit of luck that there was no one uh, close enough to get to the rebound before uh, Leeds were able to clear their lines. But still four minutes of injury time to play here. Southampton trying to play out from the back as uh, Archie Gray jumps up and heads that ball out. But there's, there's certainly plenty of energy about Leeds. Clearly, they were a little bit derailed when they conceded that goal. You could see that in the first five or six minutes, but they've managed to gather themselves and there's a real uh, confidence about them now, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Leeds have played Southampton, of course, twice this season. Season. They've lost both occasions and fallen behind on both occasions as well in that game. They've been the first to concede in both matches at St. Mary and at Ellen Road. So it is going to be an uphill task. They'll have to do something they've failed to do this season against Southampton. But they have looked dangerous on occasions, have Leeds. Uh, Southampton bring it forward with Taylor Harwood Bellis. Plays onto the left-hand side for Arebo, who goes further wide to Fraser. Now inside for Flynn Downs, who's bringing it forward quite nicely here. Rutter puts a challenge in. In fact, it's Stevens who had the ball, finds Flynn Downs in the end, and now he can look to bring it forward. Onto the left-hand side for Fraser. Squared up by Rutter, gets away from the Frenchman. Still going here, Fraser. Chip ball towards the back post. Good header away by Junior Furpo, and Somerville can flick it on towards Joel Pirro. But it's dealt with well in the end by Harwood Bellis. Now down the right-hand side for Walker-Peters. Squared up by Somerville. Inside to a dozy. Back to Walker-Peters. Inside now for Smallbone. In the penalty area. Plays it along the six-yard box. Cleared away in the end, though, by Leeds and Ilya Gruev. And that bit of pressure doesn't pay off there for Southampton. But on a number of occasions, they look very dangerous. Well, they are. Just as we're saying, the Leeds have responded well. And they're trying to, to get back into this game. And Southampton are now suddenly starting to look very dangerous here in, in injury time. It's almost like that chance that they just had with a great save from Melia has now given Southampton that little bit more belief as Howard Bellis tries a long ball forward. Yeah, nice ball looking towards Adam Armstrong, but the poor touch allows Joe Rodon to get in between man and ball, and it's out for a Leeds throw in in the near side corner. Very, very deep inside the Leeds half. As we've got about two minutes left of injury time at the end of this first half. It's independent off tube studio based commentary of the championship playoff final at Wembley. It's currently Leeds nil, Southampton one. It's been a very evenly matched game so far but Southampton able to find the ball in the back of the net as William Nonto is going to chase after this ball that will go back to Jan Bednarek and then all the way back to Alex McCarthy Southampton will just look to see their way through to half time at 1-0 Leeds will be desperate if they can to find an equaliser in the final few moments as Gruev will quickly take that throw and inside to Joe Rodon back to Archie Gray He's not really under any real pressure, so he needs to try and find the correct pass here. On the right-hand side, chip ball over the top towards Willie Nonto. Leeds want a foul. It looked a pretty innocuous challenge there on Willie Nonto, so referee John Brooks says no free kick, and Southampton will look to build along the back line, and there's no real pressure from Leeds United. They look, cons uh, they look, they're, they're like they'll accept the 1-0 at half-time. 
It's been a pretty disappointing first half from them in terms of clear-cut opportunities and defensively, although they've got an opportunity to bring the ball forward here. Kamara's lost it, though, and Flynn Downs can come forward, and he's done really well to get away from Ethan Ampadu. Finds Adam Armstrong, driving towards the penalty area. Armstrong goes for goal on his left foot. Good block by Joe Rodon. And again, though, Ethan Ampadu caught our position, driving into the midfield, and he's very much left his back line out to dry. He's got to be more careful about that. And I'm, I'm, From Leeds' point of view, I hope someone in the coaching staff has noticed it, because Ampadu again he's he's in the wrong position there and it's credit that uh, Leeds can at least get that uh, block in it's Rodon with the block there was no real way for Armstrong to get that ball through to Edozi so he had to go for goal and in the last 30 seconds of injury time Southampton have a corner yeah an opportunity for Southampton to the double their lead right before half time a goal that would be devastating for Leeds to concede just before the interval it will be Smallbone to take on the left hand side in swinger towards the six yard box punched away by Melier this time the Frenchman does well to get a touch on the corner it is going to fall to Sam Adozi though on the right hand side goes back to Flynn Downs and then centrally for Kyle Walker-Peters thought about chipping the ball into the box opted not to and that is half time at Wembley John Brooks blows for the half time whistle and the difference between these two sides Adam Armstrong his fourth goal of the season against Leeds United at half time it is Leeds United nil Southampton 1